Hey there, Helene. Uh, I would love to tell a couple of really good Michael Landon stories. Uh, the great thing about Michael is there are so many good stories to tell. First and foremost, the man was supremely talented. He was writing, directing, producing, and acting in Little House on the Prairie. I'm sure that you're all aware of that. However, I don't know how much, how many people are aware of how much work that is. He was writing the episodes as they would drive him into work and drive him home. He would go and look at edits during lunch. He was directing the episodes that he would act in. Um, just an amazing, amazing talent. In addition, he was one of the nicest people that I've ever worked with and for. A guy doing all of those things could easily be someone that had an ego the size of, you know, Montana itself, um, or I should say the size of Minnesota <laughs> um, itself, but he, he never allowed that to get in the way of the way that he treated other people. He was one of the kindest people that I've ever worked with. Um, if you're deep into the lore of Little House and are kind of aware of Allison and Melissa and all the stories that they tell, you'll know that he was a very funny man. If you don't, I'm telling you, he was a very, very funny man. He loved a good joke and he would love to be in on a good practical joke. Um, of the couple stories I'm gonna tell you, two of them are, are funny ones. The one that I think has been told, but it's just, I still think is great is, there was a lady, um, Mary, who was our script supervisor and she takes notes of what's happening in each and every scene. And so she has a chair and she has a big um, book, a big script and the chair has bags on it so that she can carry her scripts from location to location. And, you know, on Little House, you know, there was a lot of gentlemen around, and so they would carry her, her, her chair around every now and again. But for the main part, Mary would, you know, just drag her chair from one place to another. On this one particular day, Michael started putting small rocks into her bags. Um, and so by the end of the day, her chair was weighted down by maybe about 10 extra pounds of rocks. Um, again, all for the joke, which she loved, and it was it was pretty hysterical. Um, another one of his practical jokes was, you know, he would always consult with Mary about with an upcoming scene. And one of the things Michael would do is, you know, he, he would, you know, call you over and, you, you know, wave you over to come and talk to him. So on this one particular time, he had found this tiny little frog over by uh, what's, I guess, Plum Creek. It was just basically a ditch that they filled with water whenever we needed a creek by the uh, by the little house. And he found this small frog and he put it in his mouth. And he called Mary over without her knowing it was there. And she came over and she's got her scripts and everything. She goes, yes, Michael. And he looked at her and he smiled and he opened his mouth and this frog jumped out and she freaked out. I did, as a kid, that was like one of the funniest things I think I've ever seen. Um, one of the other things that he did, which I thought was hysterical, is later in the show, uh, Melissa's mom had bought herself this really nice car that she was really excited for. And she had come to the studio to go to lunch with Melissa and she was kind of showing off the car, which you do. I mean, it's just the way it is. While she was at lunch, Michael had the special effects guys put in smoke bombs underneath the hood of the car so that when she got in the car, they would time it so the smoke bombs would go off when she turned it on, making it feel like she had just, her engine had just exploded. She was parked right outside the set. This is when we were actually, we had moved from Paramount to MGM. And pretty much everybody except for Melissa's mom was in on it. I even think Melissa was in on it. And I remember, I mean, the practical joke went off perfectly. She got in the car, she turned on the ignition, and all of the smoke starts billowing out of her engine. And she's like, oh my God, oh my God, oh, my new car. And it was really fun. But the thing I remember more, most of all, was seeing 50 people try to sneak around the corner of the studio lot to see what was happening. That was probably more fun than anything, just to see how you know Michael had orchestrated this thing where 50 people are sneaking around the studio a lot trying to witness the exact time where it happened. Um, 